Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. My guest today is Cheryl Hyatt, and we're talking about leadership and employee morale. Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me today is Cheryl Hyatt, a partner at Hyatt Fennel Executive Search, who's responsible for successfully recruiting senior administrative professionals for educational and nonprofit organizations. Cheryl brings over 30 years of management and organizational leadership experience to her role with clients. Hi, Cheryl. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Susan. Uh, it's great to be here. Okay, let's talk about office morale. <laughs> I, I think, I like to think that a good leader knows when their, their company morale is low. Um, I do work with clients on developing leadership skills, and some of those skills do help you key into when things are going well. But let's say we're talking about someone who's not one of my clients, <laughs> and they don't have a good beat on morale. What's the best way to get a sense of what's really going on in the office? So it's interesting. I, I think there's a number of ways to be able to tell that. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's better to know ahead of time and most strong and good administrators know if there's a concern or there's a challenge. Right. The clients that I work with, um, most of the time, um, a lot of my clients are higher education institutions. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the time, the faculty and staff, there's, um, there's always a mixture. Mm -hmm. Some people are very happy in their role and others aren't. And I think that holds true in no matter what industry we're in. But I think that a good administrator, no matter who that boss is, has kind of a pulse on what's going on. And it's not even so much um, the morale that's there, it's why, you know, what's causing that. Sometimes it's very little, um, you, you can do some little things that will help to change morale. And yeah. you don't have to, it doesn't have to be some big uh, function or some big event that happens that changes the morale. Sometimes it's miscommunication. Mm -hmm. that, you know, um, rumors start or that people are talking and they hear it say, and all of a sudden, you know, people are angry. Right. Um, I think that's part of a cause. I do think that the best administrators are those that know their, their colleagues, they know what's going on and they're able to make adjustments there. Mm -hmm. Um, but every once in a while, you get that, you know, that boss who is totally out in left field, has no clue what's going on. I think that if there is a, someone that works with them, a colleague, um, senior staff, the one thing that I have noticed a lot is that Industries, no matter which it is, whether it's higher education or mm -hmm. a nonprofit or a for-profit, they're hiring individuals to come in and kind of do an analysis right. of the institution. And whether that's from a financial perspective or from a uh, you know, perspective of what it is that they do from the industry, people tend to talk. And I think <laughs> that you know, bringing in the right consultants who can also say, okay, this is what you need to, to make change, but I also need to let you know, this is what's going on with the faculty, with the staff, with your industry, with the employees that you have. I think that's really critical. And I think once you become a boss, no matter what level that is, if you're a director, if, you know, all the way up through the owner of a company, a CEO or a board, I think you need to have a pulse on what's going on within your organization because if you don't it just continues to explode right, right? and well, yeah. the better. well you do have to be in conversation and, and this is the funny thing is that people so often get to the ivory towers and you know they're i'm the boss now and they forget about the, the little people <laughs> who really are little people at all and who have such a big impact on the organization and 
you know, I, I like to tell my, my clients occasionally, I, I, I occasionally would give them a little homework and have them watch that show. I, I haven't done it in a while because I don't think it's on anymore, but the show where the bosses go and in disguise, you know, the one boss or whatever. Yeah. 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 Undercover boss. That's it. And, and so I've occasionally given my clients homework to watch that show because they remember that, Oh yeah, I really do need to be in conversation with everyone in the company, even though I trust my leaders and hope that filters up. I still need to be really connecting at all levels. It's really interesting how people forget that. Well, let's, isn't it funny how people just, people are so forgetful of where they came from. Well, <laughs> let's talk about performance reviews. You say they should not be once a year and they should not be ritualized. And I totally agree. What's your take? What's a better way? I think if, a, so I'm going to explain why I think not once a year. Okay. Because if someone has um, some issues, they need to find out ahead of time, you know, not yeah not uh, 11 and a half months later to find out that there's a concern or there's a challenge right. and then you know their their performance review reflects that you know 11 months too late yeah so i think that a continual thought process and i don't think it needs to be structured i don't think you need to have a you know structured meeting with the your your coworker or you know your colleague whoever it is that you are you know taking a look at their performance review right um it doesn't need to be okay every three months every 90 days we're going to look at it although if the first one does not go well then i would suggest that it's <laughs> more formalized after that but part of what i found in my doing this or in my uh some of my clients when they do it is the fact that employees sometimes don't have a clear understanding of what their goal is right. so they they aren't sure what they're supposed to be doing so looking at it from that perspective if they think they're supposed to be doing a and their boss thinks they should be doing B. And so they keep chugging along under A, you know, they're never going to get to where they needed to be. So that's why I think, you know, a, a check-in every so often. And I don't think it's the employee's responsibility. I think it's the employer's. Yeah. So whoever is, you know, the hiring manager should pop in you know, or even schedule a time. Hey, you know, just wanted to buy you a cup of coffee. See if you're having any challenges. Um, see I like if that. you think you're doing well. Because, you know, I think that people are smart. You yes. Know, they truly are in their particular area. And if they feel that things aren't going well, then obviously something's wrong there. There's a disconnect. And whether that's between them and their employer or their supervisor, however that fits, we want to make sure that it's continually happening so that by the time you get to that year's review, when it truly is a scheduled review, things are going well. Right. Or you know where there were some challenges and you're able to say, so how do you feel about those? And these are the areas where I think we've done well. And these are the areas where we need to, to make some changes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I always say that I don't think that anything that comes in a performance review should come as a surprise. Correct. So if you're going to do those formalized performance reviews, you do have to do those check-ins because you don't want people to be surprised when you say, you're, you know, there are some areas where you're not quite performing as well as I'd like. You don't want that to be a surprise to someone. <laughs> That's right. They should know that. It should, it should be almost a, a conversation that doesn't almost even need to happen. But of course, companies have rules. And so in the companies that have those rules, just don't make those things a surprise. That's all. <laughs> and, and you know what? Things change. Um, yeah. You know, not all goals are concrete. And they're not all etched in stone that this is where I need to be, you know, 11 and a half months from now, they change over time. And so you want to make sure, you know, sometimes we as bosses, you know, and I consider myself in that arena, I assume 
that my employees know this is going to be happening. That they know. <laughs> and they're not always. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, what do you mean this didn't get done? And I never shared that with them. Or I never yeah. said, hey, we're taking it from this perspective and we're going to be doing that. We're shifting. And so I think that having those periodic um, contacts with yeah. your employees help touch points both of you on on the same page yeah exactly exactly excellent wise advice absolutely cheryl thank you so much for joining me on the show today you are quite welcome i this is um i love what i do i've been doing it for a number of years and it has evolved over the years and i just think that helping people find the right match mm -hmm. is so critical for their success for their professional success and you know in today's day and age it's not just about your job it also has to do with your personal life and they have to match together so absolutely absolutely would Thank you like you to join me on the after show that would be terrific i would appreciate that all right okay viewers if you'd like to join cheryl and me on the after show head on over to twoquestions.tv. That's our URL. I tell you every single day of the week. It's the only place you can find the after show. So we're going to be over there. All the cool kids are going to be over there. Come with us. Now, in the meantime, we're going to have a link in our show notes for today. That's the stuff down below. And that's how you can find Cheryl. Her link to her website will be there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.